मोहतरम दाऊद खान साहेब प्रोफेसर आदि साहेब वाइस चांसलर यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ हरिपुर प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर मंजूर मलिक साहेब मोहतरम रशीद आफ्ताब साहेब फैकल्टी मेम्बर्स स्टूडेंट्स अल्लाम वरम Uh, it's a great honor for me to be here this morning and share with you briefly in how I look on the issue of water management. I think uh, we Muslims are blessed with Rajas Manas Manu Vatana, which is very compact and universal, and that guidance tells us that if you live a life which is based on moderation, then you resolve your issues amicably. Therefore, the Quran says that you are invited to eat and drink, but don't go to excess. Kulu washrabu wala The word tusrifu or asraf simply means each one has to make an ethical judgment what is enough and what is more than enough. A crude example, when you go for a wedding ceremony and food is offered, just look around and you will find that quite often people heap up their dish and maybe eat only one third of it and dump later on the rest of it. That means they have not defined how much they need, greed, desire to take more and more, and destroying the portion which could have saved life of a starving people. All that is given to us in one single word, that do not commit asraf, extravagance. You all like to wear a nice dress, but if a person decides for every day of a month you must have a new dress. So at least 30 ordinary dresses. When you find in the street children who are beautiful, like roses, but having torn dress, is that fairness, rationality, logical living, responsible living, or ethical living? Therefore, water management is essentially an ethical issue. And unless our coming generations imbibe ethical values, unless they understand life given to us is a trust, and we have to use it judiciously based on ethical principles. In every area of life, you will find that we are extravagant. You know that we celebrate wedding ceremonies, and if a wedding ceremony does not have a seven days celebration of illuminations, then we think it's no wedding ceremony. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to enjoy be pleasant, but not by wasting energy. Unless we change our attitude of mind, we may have, after every hundred kilometers a dam, we may have, after every few hundred kilometers, a powerhouse to make energy, but still will not be self-sufficient. It's mindset, your vision of life, approach of life. And unfortunately, our education system 
does not inculcate ethical values. It makes you a person who is just after wealth, power, or glamour. You'll find that uh, a culture of selfies has spread all over our country. What does that mean? Praising myself with the help of my mobile by taking my own photograph in a stylish manner. What kind of self-praise is that? Is that indicator of a balanced mind, a moderate mind, a creative mind? And you can just not provide you with values. Consequently, you become subservient to immediate needs and desires. Glamour, wealth and power. On the other hand, if we follow simple Quranic principles with reference to water, Dr. Rashid Aftab referred to Ahadis, but the basic principle the Quran has given is that water brings life. Therefore, it tells us again and again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends rain which regenerates land. But that rain is not only physical rain. That rain is also by way of divine guidance which has come to us in the form of the Quran. Just as water brings greenery and fertile um, produce, similarly this guidance which has come as a rain to us inculcates values, balance, beauty, creativity, peace, tranquility in our lives. And therefore, the young generation have to make an ethical judgment. <clears throat> Either they become like the crowds of the West. The crowds of the West run after glamour and a penurial approach. And ultimately, either get hooked to drugs or commit suicides. But Islam has provided us a different approach. If you understand purpose of life, that you have to serve Allah and His creation. Half of your life for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and half for His makhluq. Khidmat of khalq and khidmat of rab. Then you develop a balance. And that balance provides you with enormous energy and understanding. The creator of the universe knew very well that in 2030 or 2050, that must will be the number of population. He also knew very well how much water resource will be there and how much will deplete. And since he is the owner of resources, he knows very well how to feed his people. But people never know how to have sustainability. Sustainability means when you are able to save something for the future. Not just now. We have to come out of now and think about future. When you think about future, automatically you become ethical and careful. And when you are ethical, you resolve your issues. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guaranteed to feed and provide water to us. It is we who should understand how we can make better use of it. If we make better use of it, then all those theories you are taught make no sense. Population provides you energy, strength, power. Human resource 
is the only power that can change. Technology is subservient to it. You create technology, not the contrary. And therefore, the more human resource, the more resourceful we are. It's wrong to think that if you have more population, you have more power. You will have additional hands, brains, power to work. Those countries which at one time thought population control can give them prosperity have reversed their policies. Over 60% of population of Germany has lost its energy to produce. They are not only in workforce. In China, same problem is emerging. And people are now trying to have more children in European countries. I think we should not be subject to discarded ideologies and ideas. We still believe Malthus and Adam Smith and so and so are the architects of economy. It's past. You have to think of future and come up with new concepts and ideas. We can have more force to have industrial development, agricultural development, if we do not cut down on population. Our disease is not population. Our disease is illiteracy. Islam came with culture of knowledge. The very first revelation talked about it. It provided institutional framework that masjid should be not place of worship alone, but place of education. We made it a church of Muslims. 